Welcome to the Ultimate Linux Crash Course. Whether you are a total beginner or a seasoned tech enthusiast, this is the place to be if you want to unlock the full power of your system. Linux is not just an operating system. It is a gateway to freedom, customization, and total control over your computing experience. In this course, we are stripping away the complexity and diving straight into what makes Linux the heartbeat of servers, developers, and hackers worldwide. By the end of this video, you will be comfortable navigating the command line, managing files, understanding permissions, and much more. So, grab your terminal and let's dive into the world where you call the shots. Before we dive into the nuts and bolts, let's talk about something that makes Linux unique. Its vast array of distributions. Linux is not a one-size-fits-all operating system. It's like a buffet with countless options tailored to specific needs. Whether you are a beginner, developer, or security professional, there is a Linux distro made for you. Let's take a quick tour of some of the most popular ones. Ubuntu. One of the most beginner-friendly distros, Ubuntu is perfect if you are just getting started. It's stable, has great community support, and is widely used for both desktops and servers. Debian. If stability is your priority, Debian is a solid choice. It's the foundation of Ubuntu and is known for being rock solid with a slower release cycle, great for long-term support. Fedora, cutting edge and fast moving, Fedora is often the first to implement new technologies. It's perfect if you want the latest and greatest software in a modern desktop environment. Arch Linux. For those who love complete control, Arch is a minimalist DIY distro. You build it from the ground up. Installing only what you need, perfect for advanced users who want a customized system. Kali Linux, focused on security professionals, Kali is packed with tools for penetration testing and ethical hacking. If you are diving into the world of cybersecurity, this distro is your playground. For this video, we will be using Kali Linux. Commands and methods apply to all. Linux Mint, if you are coming from Windows and want a familiar desktop experience, Linux Mint is a great choice. It's user-friendly, lightweight, and has a traditional desktop interface. Each of these distros has its own strengths and unique features. This is not all. So many flavors for Linux out there, which you will find out as your need. But at their core, they are all built on the Linux kernel. Once you know how to use one, the skills translate across all of them. In this crash course, we will focus on the essentials that apply to any Linux distribution. So no matter which one you choose, you will be up and running in no time. Now that we have covered the different Linux distributions, let's dive into something fundamental, the Linux directory structure. Unlike Windows, which relies on drive letters like C and D, Linux uses a hierarchical file system that starts with the root directory, symbolized by a single forward slash. Everything in Linux files, directories, devices, and even processes branches out from this root directory. Let's walk through some of the most important directories you will come across. Slash, or called root, the starting point of the entire system. Every file and directory starts here, and all other directories are subdirectories of root. Bin, short for binaries, this directory contains essential system executables or commands, like ls, copy, and move that you are using in the terminal. These are critical to the operation of the system, so even in recovery mode, these commands are available. ETC. This is the configuration hub. It contains configuration files for the system and installed programs. Whenever you need to change system settings or services, this is where you will often find the relevant files. Optional, referred as OPT or optional. Third-party software are present here. Home. This is where user-specific data lives. Each user has a personal folder inside home. So if your username is John, your files will be located in home slash John. It's essentially your personal space, similar to the documents or my files folders in Windows operating systems. Run. It stores volatile runtime data. Var. Standing for variables. Var stores data that frequently changes as the system runs. User. This is where you will find user installed programs and utilities. It's often compared to the program files folder on Windows. Inside it, there are further directories like user slash bin for user executables for shared data. Sys. It is a virtual file system for modern Linux distributions to store and allows modification of the devices connected to the system. Temp. This directory is used for temporary files, which may be created and deleted by the system or users. It's usually cleared on system reboot. Dev. In Linux, Devices like hard drives, USB, and printers are represented as files. 
The dev directory contains special files that represent these devices, allowing you to interact with hardware through the file system. Mint and media. These directories are where external drives, USB, or network file systems are temporarily mounted and accessible to the system. Root. This is the home directory for the root as super user account, which has elevated permissions to manage the entire system. The Linux directory structure may seem complex at first, but once you understand the purpose of these key directories, navigating through the file system becomes second nature. Remember, it's all organized logically, with everything having its place. As we progress through this course, you will get hands-on experience working with these directories. So, get ready to dive in as we explore the essential commands that will take your Linux experience from beginner to expert level. Remember, every command you learn is a tool in your arsenal, and when you use them together, that's when the magic truly happens. First we have in list is ls, or list command. The ls command lists the content of a folder, including files and directories. The ls command will check the content of your current directory. To list items inside subfolders, add r option. Meanwhile, use option a to show hidden contents. cd command. Use cd to navigate between directories in your Linux terminal. It does not have any option, and the syntax is simple. If you are using cd without any directory name, it will return your current directory where you belong to. And if you use cd space dot dot, it will execute as one directory back. Now, along with dash, goes back to the previous directory and show path. pwd command. To check the full path of your current working directory, use the pwd command. It's print your current working directory where you are in mkdir command. This command let you create one or multiple directories. To create a folder in another location, specify the full path. Otherwise, this command will make the new item in your current working directory. By default, this command allows the current user to read, write, and execute files in the new folder. You can set custom privileges during the creation by adding the m option. More you will learn permission about further commands. rmdir command. Run this command to delete empty directories in your Linux system. This command won't work if the directory contains subfolders. To force the deletion, add the dash p option along with directory path. If the target is in another location, specify the full path touch command. Run the touch command to create a new empty file in a current directory. If you want file in another directory, set file path along with command. Copy command. Use the copy command to copy files from your current directory to another folder. You can also use cp to duplicate the content of one file to another using this syntax. Additionally, cp lets you duplicate a directory and its content to another folder using the dash r option. rm command, he rm command deletes files from a directory. You can add the r option to remove a folder and its contents, including subdirectories. Use the E flag to display a confirmation message before the removal, or F to deactivate it completely. Move command. The main usage of the MV command is to move a file or folder to another location. You can also use this command to rename files in your Linux system. If you specify the full path, you can simultaneously rename files and move them to a new location like this. File command. The file command checks a file type such as txt, pdf, or other. Zip and unzip commands. The zip command compresses one or multiple files into a zip archive, reducing their size. To extract a compressed file into your current working directory, use the unzip command. tar command. The tar command bundles multiple files or directories into an archive without compression. To create a new tar file, you must add the C option. Then, use the F flag to specify the archive name. Nano, VI, and JED command. Nano, VI, and JED commands let you edit files. Nano is a simple, easy-to-use text editor that is perfect for beginners. It operates entirely within the terminal, offering a user-friendly interface with on-screen commands for opening, editing, and saving files. Vim, its more advanced variant, it is a powerful modal text editor built into nearly all Unix-like systems. It's favored by many experienced users for its efficiency once you master its commands. Cat command. The concatenate or cat command has various usages. The most basic one is printing the content of a file. To print the content in reverse order, use tack instead. If you add the standard output operator symbol, the cat command will create a new file. You can also use cat with the operator to combine the content of multiple files into a new item. grep command, global regular expression print, 
where grep lets you search specific lines from a file using keywords. It is useful for filtering large data like logs. You can also filter data from another utility by piping it to the grep command. Sed command. Use the sed command to search and replace patterns in files quickly. You can replace a string in multiple files simultaneously by listing them. Head command. Use the head command to print the first few entries of a file. By default, head will show the first 10 lines. However, you can change this setting using the N option followed by your desired number. Tail command. The tail command is the opposite of head, allowing you to print the last few lines from files or another utility's output. The tail utility also has the same option as head. Awk command. This command searches and manipulates regular expression patterns in a file. Although similar to sed, this command offers more operations beyond substitution, including printing, mathematical calculation, and deletion. It also lets you run a complex task with an if statement. You can run multiple actions by listing them according to their execution order, separated by a semicolon. Sort command. Use the sort command to rearrange a file's content in a specific order. Remember that this utility does not modify the actual file and only prints the rearranged content as an output. Cut command. The cut command selects specific sections from a file and prints them as a terminal output. F option selects a specific row field. Option B cuts the line by a specified byte size. Option C sections the line using a specified character. Option D separates lines based on delimiters. You can combine multiple options for a more specific output. For example, this command extracts the third to fifth field from a comma-separated list. diff command. The diff command compares two files and prints their differences. t command. The t command outputs another command's results to both the terminal and a file. It's helpful if you want to use the data for further processing or backups. If the specified file does not exist, t will create it. Be careful when using this command since it will overwrite the existing content. Locate command. The locate command searches for a file and prints its location path. If you use the R option to search files using regular expressions. Find command. The find command searches for a file within a specific directory. If you don't specify the path, the find command will search your current working directory. To find files using their name, add the name option followed by the keyword. You can specify the type of item you're looking for using the type flag. The type F option will search files only, while type D will find directories. sudo command, superuser do or sudo enables non-root users who are part of the sudo group to execute administrative commands. Who am I command, you can check the currently logged in user from the Linux command line shell. su command, the su command lets you switch to another user in the terminal session. chmod command, this command let you change the permissions of files or directories. In Linux, there are three folder and file permissions read, write, and execute. You can assign them to three parties, the owner, a group, or other accounts belonging to neither category. Ch own command. This command lets you change the ownership of files, directories, or symbolic links. User add, password, and user del commands. Use the user add command to create a new account in your Linux system. By default, the user add command does not prompt you to give the new user a password. You can add or change it manually later with the password command. To remove a user, use the user del command followed by the account name. df command. This command checks your Linux system's disk usage, displaying the used space in percentage and kilobyte. du command. To check the size of a directory and its content, use the du command, top command. The top command displays all running processes in your system and their hardware consumption. The top command has various options. For example, p flag lets you check a specific process by specifying its ID. Meanwhile, add the d flag to change the delay between screen updates. h top command, like top, this command lets you display and manage processes in your Linux server. It has options similar to top, but you can add additional ones. For example, C flag enables the monochrome mode, while tree shows processes in a hierarchical view. PS command. This command summarizes the status of all running processes in your Linux system at a specific time. Unlike top and htop, it does not update the information automatically. You can print a more detailed report by adding other options. 
For example, use A flag to list all processes in your system, R to check only the running ones, or U flag uses for username to query those associated with a particular account. U name command. The Unix name or U name command displays detailed information about your Linux machine, including hardware, name, and operating system kernel. Without any option, the command will print your system's kernel name. To check all information about your machine, add the A option, hostname command. Use the hostname command to check your VPS hostname and other related information. If you leave the option empty, the command will print your hostname. Add I to check your server IP address. Add A to print the hostname alias. Time command. The time command measures the execution time of commands or scripts to gain insights into your system performance. You can measure a series of commands by separating them using double ampersands or semicolons. System CTL command. This command is used to manage services in your Linux system. The subcommands represent your task, like listing, restarting, terminating, or enabling the services. For example, we will list Linux services using this watch command. The watch command lets you continuously run a utility at a specific interval to monitor changes in the output. By default, watch will run your command every two seconds, but you can change the interval using the N option followed by the delay. If you want to highlight changes in the output, add D flag. Jobs command. Jobs are tasks or commands that are running in your current shell. To check them, use the jobs command with the job ID. Running this command without any argument will show all jobs running in the terminal foreground and background. If you don't have any ongoing tasks, it will return an empty output. Kill command. Use the kill command to terminate a process using its ID. To obtain the process ID, run the following command, shutdown command. The shutdown command lets you turn off or restart your Linux system at a specific time. If you run the command without any arguments, your system will shut down immediately. You can specify the schedule using a 24-hour format or a relative one. For example, enter plus 5 to shut down the system after 5 minutes. Ping command. The ping command sends packets to a target server and fetches the responses. It is helpful for network diagnostics. By default, ping sends infinite packets until the user manually stops it by pressing Ctrl plus C. However, you can specify a custom number using the C option. You can also change the interval between transfers by adding I flag. Wget command. The Wget command lets you download files from the internet via HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP protocols. By default, the wget command will download an item to your current working directory. curl command, running curl without an option, will print the website HTML content in your terminal. If you add the o option, the command will download files from the specified link. This command is also helpful for testing API or server endpoints. You can do so by adding the x option followed by an HTTP method, depending on whether you want to fetch or upload data. IP command. The IP utility lets you list and manage your system network parameters, similar to the ifconfig command in older Linux distros. Running this command without any argument will print the manual, including an explanation about acceptable options and objects. Netstack command. The netstack command displays information about your system network configuration. Add an option to query specific network information. Here are several flags to use. A flag displays listening and closed sockets. T flag shows TCP connections. U flag lists UDP connections. R flag displays routing tables. I flag shows information about network interfaces. C flag continuously outputs network information for real time monitoring. Traceroute command. The traceroute command tracks a packet's path when traveling between hosts, providing information like the transfer time and involved routers. You can use a host name, domain name, or IP address as the destination. If you don't specify an option, Traceroute will run the test using the default settings. Change the maximum packet hops using the M option. To prevent Traceroute from resolving IP addresses, add N. You can also enable a timeout in seconds using the W flag followed by the duration. NS lookup command. This command requests a domain name system or DNS server to check a domain linked to an IP address or vice versa. If you don't specify a DNS server, NS Lookup will use your internet service provider's default resolver. You can add other options to change how this command queries an IP address or a domain. For example, use the type option to specify the information you want to check, such as the DNS records. 
You can also set up automatic retry with the retry flag and add port to use a specific port. Dig command, the domain information groper, or dig command displays information about a domain. It is similar to NSLOOKUP, but more comprehensive. Running dig without an argument will check a records of the specified domain using the operating system's default resolver. You can query a particular record by specifying it in the type argument. History command. Run the history command to check previously run utilities. Add the R option if you want to clear the terminal history. To rerun a specific utility from the list, enter an exclamation mark followed by its ID. LS of command. This command stands for list open files. It is a powerful utility that provides information about files opened by processes in a Linux system. Identify which process is using a file. Useful for troubleshooting when a file is locked or when you are unable to delete a file because it's being used. Without any option, it will list all open files. Instead, this using U option in files opened by a specific user. P option list files opened by a specific process with I option. It will list all network connections using I option with port number. Check which processes are using a specific port. Man command. The man or manual command displays a comprehensive guide of another utility. If you specify only the command name, man will display the entire manual. Alternatively, you can add tool name with man command to print more specific information about tools or commands. Echo command. Use echo to print text in your command as a terminal output. You can also add the redirection symbol to print the text in a file instead of terminal. If you use two symbols, it will append the existing content. LN command. This command links files or directories with a shortcut. This command will automatically create the shortcut, meaning you don't need to make one manually. Alias and unalias command. The alias command lets you set another name for a string that belongs to a file, text program, or command name. For example, the following will assign n as the alias for the ifconfig command, allowing you to use the letter instead of the full name. To check a command's alias, run alias followed by an alternative name. Cal command. The cal command displays a calendar in your Linux command line interface. If you don't add any argument, the command will show the current date. Alternatively, you can enter a specific month and year in a numerical format. You can also add the three option to show the current, previous, and next month. APT and DNF command. The apt command lets you manage advanced package tool libraries in Debian-based operating systems such as Ubuntu and Kali Linux. The subcommands define the action, like updating the library, upgrading software, installing an application, or removing a package. For example, we will install the Vim text editor. I hope you now feel more confident in navigating Linux from basic commands to advanced techniques. That brings us to the end of our Linux crash course for hackers. We have gone from understanding the basics to exploring pro-level commands that are essential for any cybersecurity enthusiast or IT professional. Linux is a powerful tool in your hacking toolkit, and mastering it will give you the edge in any cybersecurity challenge. Whether you are a hacker or an IT professional, or just someone passionate about mastering this powerful OS, remember that practice is key. Keep exploring, keep learning, and push your skills to the next level. If you found this content helpful, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on more hacking tips and tutorials. Keep practicing, stay curious, and happy hacking. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.